All right, my fellow Virgo friends, how are you today? Aaron Michael Eschenberg here, honest day, and bringing you your monthly horoscope for April of 2020. Right? Well, what is going on? We've got not a lot of movement as much as we had the past couple of months, but there's still some powerful changes in the chart. Uh, specifically, Venus entering your 10th house of career, which is definitely going to be something positive. A lot of energy moving from your 5th house into your 6th house. You know, Saturn just moved into the 6th house or is around this time, depending on where you're at, you know, where your sun or your rising sign is at. So I'll show you the chart here and kind of talk about what's going on. So, you know, as you can see here, you know, 12th house empty, 1st house empty, 2nd house empty, 3rd house empty, 4th house empty. But we have a lot going on as far as your creative self-expression, okay? Uh, we're, we're changing the way that we're talking, the way that we're communicating, the way that we see ourselves, okay? Which is huge, is we have this Jupiter-Pluto conjunction happening right now on the 1st of the month. You know, we still have Saturn and Mars conjunct here in the fifth or sixth house, depending on where this is at in your chart. Right. Um, so this is dealing, you know, our shadow of our own personality. Okay. Pluto represents the shadow period and the shadow side, you know, of autumn, fall, going inward, you know, a huge transformation. And Jupiter represents expansion exploring more options right so we're exploring our shadow within our own personality here in the fifth house so we're going to be working through some serious serious shadows some serious um character i don't know about flaws i mean i'm a, I'm a fellow virgo too so this applies to me i'm a virgo rising as well two degrees uh you, you know so there's there's parts of our personality that we're rediscovering and saying well which direction do i want to go with this who was I? Who have I been? Who do I want to be? You know, that's the big thing. And then we've got Mars up here in your sixth house, Saturn in your sixth house saying, okay, apply these lessons and make it real. And now bring this to work. You're a visionary when it comes to work. You know, the, the, the services that you provide to other people, you know, visionary, very futuristic thinking. You're ahead of the curve. Okay, and we're going to see that play out here. Now on the third, Venus is going to enter your 10th house. So it's moving out, you know, somewhere around there, out of your ninth house of, of um, travel and faith and knowledge and, and, you know, learning all this, you know, beautiful stuff that you've been learning the past few, you know, few months, right? Uh, and now we're entering into your career, Okay. So it's just like there's a payoff here, you're, how, how you're altering, you know, yourself and how you view yourself, the work that you're doing for other people. And we're really going to start to see this pay off here at, at the top of the month here when Venus enters your 10th house of career. All right. Um, on the 4th, Jupiter and Pluto become exact. On the 7th, we have a full moon in Libra, okay, which is the second house, which is about money. Okay, so there's there's some money making opportunities for you here. Okay, and the eighth house is about your shared resources, where the sun is at for you right now. What's mine? What's yours? What is ours together? You know, and and the money that we're working with, and this is going to be one of the brightest full moons of the year. You know, happening at 10:35 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, so yeah, on the East Coast, you're definitely going to see it nice and dark. Um, nice, big, and bright while it's dark, right? So it's, it's really, really powerful. Um, Mercury is going to enter Aries on the 12th, all right? Now, Mercury has been in Pisces, your 7th house, maybe your 6th house, again, depending on where this is at in your chart. Um, since the beginning of February, like the 4th of February, I do believe, all right? So February all the way through March, and then back, you know, finally on the 8th, or excuse me, the 12th, you know, a week and a half in, Mercury is going to enter the sign of Aries. Now, Mercury is really picking up speed after that first retrograde of the year and is going to be flying through Aries, again, which is your 7th or 8th house, depending on where you're at, uh, dealing with partnerships, dealing with your relationships, dealing with uh, shared resources, you know, 
Um, although it's not here in the chart, depending again on where everything is at for you, this could be, you know, potential moving, uh, moving in with somebody, um, potent talking about moving in with somebody, you know, talking about quarantining with somebody perhaps might be the better word, uh, <laughs> right? Um, but Mercury is going to fly out of there by the 27th of April. It's going to enter Taurus, okay? So the 12th, it enters Aries. On the 27th, it enters Taurus. All right, that's how fast Mercury is going to be going through this sign for you, for all of us. You know, but again, it's this between the seventh and eighth house, uh, partnerships and all this good stuff. So it's it's cooking. It's going fast. It, it wants to heat up the conversation because it's been like we, you know, Mercury and Pisces is like, I don't have a definitive answer. I don't have clear cut things. Communication is uh, maybes. You know, there's a lot of question marks. It's like, where am I? Where are you? Where do you stand? Where do we stand as individuals? Where do we stand as a partner? Where do we stand as a business? How do we want to move forward with creating this business together? You know, this, again, could be business partners, could be uh, lovers. Uh, if you're in a relationship, that means your relationship is going to spice up. It's going to be really powerful, really beautiful. You know, we're sparking the match, man. This is great. So let's get that fire cooking, right? Let me go back to the chart here. On um, the 19th, the sun is also going to enter Taurus. Excuse me. The sun is going to enter Taurus. And on the 22nd, we have a new moon. New moon in Taurus, loosely conjunct to Uranus. Uh, the sun won't conjunct Uranus until the 26th, four days later. However, at 1026 um, p.m. will be the new moon here in Taurus, in the ninth house. This is about information. This is about faith in your journey. This is about loving the process. And when we have a new moon conjunct Uranus, this is expecting the unexpected when it comes to knowledge, higher knowledge, information, travel. You know, maybe you're going to travel and you didn't expect you were going to. Maybe you're going to, um, you know, discover something could be within yourself, could be outside of self, is the ninth house definitely deals with a lot of energy that's out out there, you know, a, a fire in the distance that's worth seeking out. So there's going to be something happening, a breakthrough for you. It's just like you're, you know, that fire is worth seeking out. And once you get there and, and you see the ceremony, the song, the dance, or, or the, the conversations happening around this fire, it's going to spark something really beautiful in you. And Taurus, in general, being the sign of money, um, dealing with material possessions and goods, and Venus just freshly entered your 10th house of career, this could be a really great opportunity. Like, there's some sparks, some knowledge, some information that's coming up that's going to allow you to, you know, accumulate some money, right? Uh, and things are going to start looking really good on the business end for you, right? Really, really exciting. Um, now, the only real... Again, this is this is a pretty light month, all things considered. Okay, um, Pluto here is going to start to retrograde on the twenty fifth. Okay, so it's going to station retrograde on the twenty fifth for two days, twenty fifth, twenty sixth, and on the twenty seventh, it's going to begin its retrograde cycle. Now, like dominoes or, or like flies falling or bees falling between five G towers, it's going to be one after another come May. Okay, uh, I think up next is going to be s no Venus. Venus is going to retrograde. Jupiter is going to retrograde. Saturn's going to retrograde. Neptune's. I mean, ev every everything is do 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 do. They're just all going to start retrograding one after another. But that's not until May, you know. So so Pluto is the first one, and it being our outermost planet. Um. And we're really not experiencing it till the end of the month. It's just like, how hard is this going to really hit us this month? It is just saying like, look, there's, there's things in our own shadow and our own personality that we still need to review. There's things about ourselves that we need to put in check. There's things about ourselves and the way that we're communicating, the way that we're adding our flair that needs to be refined. You know, we need to see everything for how it is. And this is going to last for about six months, you know, out there in Capricorn. So it's, it's positive, you know, the retrogrades are positive and the outer planets are not as, as intense as the inner planets are, Mercury, Venus, and Mars, which we're going to have Venus and Mars both retrograde this year. Um, so that's not yet, 
so stay excited not until may and uh july you know venus will be in may and mars will be in july somewhere around there six months it'll be in aries we'll talk about it then all right that'll be your seventh or eighth house my virgo friends so big things happening at the end of the year for you as always thank you so much for hanging out with me if you're new to the channel you know doing the daily horoscopes new daily meditations every single day uh just to try to add a little bit of positivity out there and the dailies dive way deeper into all these different aspects so again if you're new check those out because they're a lot of fun we have a lot of fun with the daily videos and um diving deep into the astrology so always thank you so much we'll see you tomorrow